We are very concerned about the number of Australians who are going to contract uh, Omicron. It's likely to be a very, very large number. And uh, even if the severity is less, there's still the potential of long, long COVID. And of course, there's the potential that the vulnerable people will bear the brunt uh, of the illness, as has been the case throughout the pandemic. And there's a lot still to be learnt about Omicron, and we're urging a cautious approach. Uh, to, to follow the, the lessons that we've learnt. We've learnt some of these lessons around the world the hard way throughout the pandemic. Let's not forget them uh, just at the time when we need them most. New South Wales, they continue to break their daily infection records and also for Australia, Victoria remains at around 1,500 cases a day. We are being told though that tighter restrictions won't be needed if hospitals aren't seeing significant increases in patient numbers. So have we struck now an appropriate balance in living with COVID? No, Miriam, unfortunately we haven't. And the explanation for that really is Omicron. Uh, if you look at what's happening in Europe, as we've just seen, uh, and in, indeed what's happening right now in New South Wales, where instead of flattening the curve, we've got a curve that's actually almost vertical. Now, remembering that hospitalisations lag behind infections uh, quite significantly by a week or even two weeks, it's too late once we actually see a sharp rise in hospitalisations. Uh, and the right thing to do right now is try and flatten that curve a little bit because we don't know what proportion of people who get Omicron are going to end up in hospital. We simply don't have that information as yet. It seems more mild, uh, but if you end up with tens of thousands of people every day getting infected, uh, which is quite a realistic uh, prospect for New South Wales, then even if a small proportion end up in hospital, uh, that could still overwhelm the system. And of course, you've also got to take into account all those people who are exposed to Omicron, uh, who therefore have to be uh, kept away from their work. If their children catch it, they're going to be kept away from their work. Uh, that's right across the economy. But of course, the impact in healthcare is devastating. And are we seeing as well with this new approach around how we live with uh, COVID and reducing restrictions, does that place the, the onus on individuals and also general health practitioners to then step up their efforts in this new phase? Well, I think health practitioners have actually been uh, stepping up for an awfully long time now, and they were really looking forward to a little bit of a break over Christmas. Instead, we've got government, uh, New South Wales government saying to them, especially GPs, well, you're going to be looking after these thousands and thousands of new COVID cases uh, every day because they don't need hospital. Uh, and in fact, while you're there, we also need you to be uh, really pulling out all stops to get uh, the booster doses into arms. So it's actually a very, very tough time uh, for GPs in particular. And those uh, who are working in hospitals are just worried. They're worried that these, uh, these sharp rising cases will uh, eventually lead to uh, huge pressure on the hospital system. Now, it is preventable, not, not totally preventable, but certainly we can reduce the impact by simple measures. Masks are not a huge uh, impact uh, on individual freedoms. We've been living with them for such a long time now, and it's very bizarre timing for the New South Wales government to pull out a mask mandate uh, just when you're seeing an incredible uh, spike in cases that matches what's happening around the world. Now, when you talk about looking around the world, we can look particularly, I suppose, to the United Kingdom. What do you think might now happen here in Australia in the weeks ahead? Well, what we're going to see uh, in New South Wales, where Omicron has clearly taken hold, uh, is a very rapid increase in cases. Uh, we will see the population uh, gradually getting their booster doses, but not at anywhere near the rate to actually slow down this, uh, this Omicron uh, wave that's likely to wash through. Now, our hope is that because it's coming on so fast, uh, it'll actually come off fairly fast as well. Uh, but that, all, of course, remains to be seen. Uh, and the pressure on the rest of the system uh, is still at this stage, unfortunately, an unknown. So it does come down, whilst governments aren't acting, to individuals uh, to make sure every time uh, that you're out of the house, you've got your mask on, that you avoid mass gatherings as we come uh, through the, the rest of the Christmas period uh, so that you're not having to isolate uh, when it comes to Christmas Day. Uh, and of course, as soon as you're eligible for a booster, uh, go and get one because we're seeing great data that in fact boosters are able to stop you getting very sick from Omicron.